Well, so for more on the action this week, we welcome in our own Rex Hoggart from Maryland. Yeah, Damon, two of those names on that list really stood out to me this morning, and that's Ricky Fowler and Francesco Molinari. They've both been struggling with their games the last few years and are really looking for any kind of spark to get things moving in the right direction. But on this golf course, where they both had so much success, they also have plenty of reasons to be optimistic. You know, it's obviously been a, a long and, and tough road, but um, continuing to move forward. Um, yeah, outside of, outside of golf, life is life is great. So I'm enjoying that part and just keep kind of continuing to grind and, and keep pushing it with the golf. And we're we're seeing the good, the right things, but it's just a matter of time before everything starts to click. You look at what was on the horizon after you won here. You won the Open Championship, of course, had the perfect Ryder Cup. Did you feel like at that time that you were playing good enough golf to do that? Or was it a matter of you just felt comfortable with your game? Yeah, no, I wouldn't have said, uh, you know, I, I couldn't, have, couldn't have said what was going to happen the, the next few months. Uh, obviously, I was happy where my game was. At. I had just won Wentworth in Europe and uh, I won here. Uh, not comfortably, but obviously had a great Sunday and, and kind of uh, managed to, to, to cruise the, the back nine on, on Sunday, which is a great feeling. Uh, but yeah, some of the other stuff still came as a bit of a surprise. Uh, but yeah, I was playing great and I, I managed to, to do that for the rest of the summer. How close is your game now to when you won here before? Uh, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Uh, obviously, a lot of things have, have changed. I think I'm, I'm different in in, in many ways uh, from 2018. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm working, trying to work my way back. Uh, I've got a kind of a new team around me, and and you know I'm trying to kind of reinvent myself. And and uh, it's fun. It's a it's a new challenge, and uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing how far I can go. Now, one of those changes that Francesco was talking about is during the pandemic, he moved he and his family to Los Angeles. And when he got out there, he started working out and playing his golf at Virginia Country Club, where he met Jamie Mulligan, who's a longtime swing coach on the PGA Tour. Now, they're working together full time. And as Francesco explained to me, it's all part of what he calls a reinvention. Damon? Rex Hoggart, a couple of big time players looking for some heat in 2022. More from Rex next hour. Your thoughts on an intriguing storyline this week outside the nation's capital. Just the one Rex was talking about right there, Francesco mm. Molinari, because he's really evidence of how quickly you can go from being the pigeon to being the statue mm. in this game. And people forget just how good he was four years ago. It's not just that he won the Open Championship. He won the Quicken Loans National right here, TPC Potomac, in the last time the PGA Tour visited here. He won the BMW Championship at Wentworth, the flagship event of what was then the European Tour. He then also won the Arnold Palmer Invitational, went 5-0 in the Ryder Cup and then kind of the wheels came off by the time the, the pandemic hit and he, he made that move with his family to Los Angeles everything started to change and the coaching team around him has changed he is obviously as Rex said working with Jamie Mulligan Dennis Pugh who worked with him at his peak back in Europe is still involved but Dennis lives between London and Germany so he doesn't see Molinari very often but he's in constant consultation with him but when you look at the numbers the the ball striking is so far off yeah. of what it was. He's in strokes gained off the tee and strokes gained approach. He's 169th and 168th on the PGA Tour. In those categories, in his banner year of 2018, he ranked 8th and 10th. And that, that's a monstrous drop to try to work your way back from. And I get there's been a lot of change in his life since then. But he's now 203 in the world rankings. He was 5th four years ago. And to me, it's just an intriguing story going back. The PGA Tour hasn't been at TPC Potomac since yeah. he shot 21 under par there in, back in 2018. So it's, it's really going to be curious to see how well he can adjust to this road back. One top 10 in his last 22 starts. A major champ who you said the wheels kind of came off during COVID. I wonder how much the wheels came off on hole number 12 at the Masters in 2019 because he hasn't been the same player since. Talking to people close to him that day maybe lingered a little bit longer than even he expected i would buy that theory yeah i mean there were a lot of guys who came kind of undone yeah. unglued on golden bell that <laughs> day in, in april of 2019 ian poulter did it you know brooks kepka was also in the water as well but molinari to me was the most surprising one he'd won yeah. the the arnold palmer invitational a month earlier and he was the guy who also faced down Tiger at Carnoustie, which people often forget. Rory also had a share of that lead at Carnoustie yeah. that Sunday afternoon 
in, in 2018. And Tiger was right there, and Molinari was the guy who didn't blink in it. And when it came to the Masters, he got a little wobbly on the back nine Sunday, and he definitely has not been the same player yeah. since then. Now, it's hard to attribute it all to that because we've had the pandemic, and he, yeah. he moved his family and all the rest of it. But there was a definite kind of chink in the armour appeared there that doesn't seem to have been welded shut ever since. Yeah, Francesco also found the water around 15 on that Sunday. Now living in Los Angeles, as Rex said, and working with Jamie Mulligan, who works with Patrick Cantley. Maybe some new voices in his ear will help. Speaking of new, uh, Ricky Fowler is my most intriguing storyline of this week. Someone who is a big-time player. We see him on commercials during PGA Tour events. Uh, he said during the Honda, Eamon, that he's a half glass full guy, not an empty. He, he's an optimist. Family life is great. But to see him missing major championships, now he is exempt into the PGA because of his performance at Kiowa, missed the Masters, and we're starting to hear him repeat himself that he's not that far away. But I have to wonder, you know, in those quiet, dark moments when he's kind of sharing a house from time to time with JT and Jordan and Ricky saying, you know what, I kind of hit my funk just as Jordan was getting out of his what must it be like how to keep that positive attitude and keep that chin up when you're just not producing the results that you're expecting to produce? Well, it was encouraging to hear him say that everything outside of golf in his life is fine. Yeah. That, you know, life's cruising along, he's married, he's a father. There's a lot of things are going well in Ricky Fowler's life. Between the ropes is not one of those things right yeah. now. We, we thought we were going to see some signs of progress back in October at the CJ Cup in Vegas that Rory McIlroy won. Ricky Fowler finished T3rd that week. He's made 10 starts this season since then. He's missed five cuts and a tie for 40th is his best finish out yeah. there. And it's, he's, he's dropped all the way down to 146th in the world rankings. The only reason he's in the PGA Championship at Southern Hills was a tie for 8th last year at Kiowa Island. He got into the Kiowa Island edition of the PGA Championship on a special invitation. Right. So it, his exemption status for the biggest championships in the game is really pretty thin at this point. And it's very hard for him to find that kind of glass half full attitude when you look at the drop off in the numbers that really matter. For him, the ball striking is considerably worse than it was a few years ago in the putting, which Putter. he led on tour. Oh. Back in 2017, he was first on tour. This year, he's 184th on tour. Now, we had Jordan Spieth on the show last week who talked about how putting stats can simply be a matter of neglect. If you're working so much on the full swing, you don't give it the attention it deserves. And Ricky Fowler's clearly maybe in that same boat as well. That yeah. it, there is neglect, perhaps, with the putter. It's not functioning to the extent that it did, but nor is any other part of the game right now. Yeah. The attitude is still good, but it at is. a certain point, it has to be corrosive to the attitude when you're not seeing the results that, for the, the work you're putting in. And he has experimented with a new putter. Does he get the same benefit of the doubt that Jordan Spieth was given by a lot of us, that the fact that he was a three-time major champ, the thought was eventually this fighter, this grinder, is going to find his way back into winning golf tournaments. Does Ricky Fowler not get the same benefit of the doubt because his resume is not as hefty as Jordan Spieth's. He doesn't get the same benefit of, of the doubt, and that's something of a, a comforting cliche that gets thrown around in this game a lot because yeah. there have been a lot of great players who lost their game and never got it back, never yeah. came anywhere close to getting their game back. And Ricky Fowler, I don't know, it's not as though his game has entirely imploded. Yeah. It's not as though he suddenly developed the yips and can't function mm. out there. He's going through a swing change that is with John Tillery that's taking longer to bed in than perhaps he would like. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt because Ricky's always had the rap, somewhat unfairly, I would argue, of being all hat, no cattle. Right. That he's out there and gets on TV on Sunday afternoon because he's in a commercial rather than being in contention. Yeah. And that's, you know, you can't knock the guy for making a living out there. He has won five times on the PGA Tour. Including he won the players, the players yeah. in, in pretty dramatic fashion. He has shown flashes of the player he could be. That's kind of hard to sustain over a lengthy period of time, especially when you're going through swing changes. He's been a soft target for the trolls for a long yeah. time because of that. He deserves probably a little more respect than he gets in this game, but it's very hard for, if you're him right now mm. when you're dealing with a criticism that's going to be added on to what you're accustomed to dealing with anyway, and you can't seem to quite find that little bit of daylight.